Joseph Louis Lagrange. Joseph Louis Lagrange. Joseph Louis Lagrange, also reported as Giuseppe Luigi Lagrange or Lagrange, Encyclopedia of Space and Astronomy, was an Italian mathematician, physicist, and astronomer, later naturalized French. He made significant contributions to the fields of analysis, number theory, and both classical and celestial mechanics. In 1766, on the recommendation of Swiss Leonhard Euler and French de Lambert, Lagrange succeeded Euler as the director of mathematics at the Prussian Academy of Sciences in Berlin, Prussia, where he stayed for over 20 years, producing volumes of work and winning several prizes at the French Academy of Sciences. Lagrange's treatise on analytical mechanics, written in Berlin and first published in 1788, offered the most comprehensive treatment of classical mechanics since Newton and formed a basis for the development of mathematical physics in the 19th century. In 1787, at age 51, he moved from Berlin to Paris and became a member of the French Academy of Sciences. He remained in France until the end of his life. He was instrumental in the decimalization in Révolutionnaire France, became the first professor of analysis at the École Polytechnique upon its opening in 1794, was a founding member of the Bureau des Longitudes, and became a senator in 1799. Scientific Contribution Lagrange was one of the creators of the calculus of variations, deriving the Euler-Lagrange equations for extrema functionals. He extended the method to include possible constraints, arriving at the method of Lagrange multipliers, Lagrange invented the method of solving differential equations known as variation of parameters, applied differential calculus to the theory of probabilities and worked on solutions for algebraic equations. He proved that every natural number is a sum of four squares. His treatise theory dysfunctions analytics laid some of the foundations of group theory, anticipating Galois. In calculus, Lagrange developed a novel approach to interpolation and Taylor's theorem. He studied the three-body problem for the Earth, Sun and Moon, and the movement of Jupiter's satellites, and in 1772 found the special case solutions to this problem that yield what are now known as the Grankin points. Lagrange is best known for transforming Newtonian mechanics into a branch of analysis, Lagrangian mechanics. He presented the mechanical principles as simple results of the variational calculus. Early years Firstborn of eleven children is Giuseppe Ludovico Lagrange, Lagrange was of Italian and French descent. His paternal great-grandfather was a French captain of cavalry, whose family originated from the French region of Tours. After serving under Louis Roman XIV, he had entered the service of Charles Emmanuel Roman II, Duke of Savoy, and married a Conti from the noble Roman family. Lagrange's father, Giuseppe Francesco Lodovico, was doctor-in-law at the University of Torino, while his mother was the only child of a rich doctor of Cambiano, in the countryside of Turin. Lagrange St. Andrew University, he was raised as a Roman Catholic. His father, who had charge of the king's military chest and was treasurer of the Office of Public Works and Fortifications in Turin, should have maintained a good social position and wealth, but before his son grew up he had lost most of his property in speculations. A career as a lawyer was planned out for Lagrange by his father, and certainly Lagrange seems to have accepted this willingly. He studied at the University of Turin and his favourite subject was classical Latin. At first he had no great enthusiasm for mathematics, finding Greek geometry rather dull. It was not until he was 17 that he showed any taste for mathematics as interest in this subject being first excited by a paper by Edmund Halley from 1693, which he came across by accident, the loan. And unaided he threw himself into mathematical studies, at the end of years incessant toil he was already an accomplished mathematician. Charles Emmanuel Roman III appointed Lagrange to serve as the substitute del Maestro di Matematica at the Royal Military Academy of the Theory and Practice of Artillery in 1755, where he taught courses in calculus and mechanics to support the Piedmontesani's early adoption of the ballistic theories of Benjamin Robbins and Leonhard Euler. In that capacity, Lagrange was the first to teach calculus in an engineering school. According to Alessandro Papasino d'Antoni, the Academy's military commander and famous artillery theorist, Lagrange unfortunately proved to be a problematic professor with his oblivious teaching style, abstract reasoning, and impatience with artillery and fortification engineering applications. In this academy, one of his students was Franz Wodaviet. Variational Calculus Lagrange is one of the founders of the calculus of variations. Starting in 1754, he worked on the problem of the torticrone, discovering a method of maximizing and minimizing functionals in a way similar to finding extrema functions. 
Lagrange wrote several letters to Leonhard Euler between 1754 and 1756 describing his results. He outlined his algorithm, leading to the Euler-Lagrange equations of variational calculus and considerably simplifying Euler's earlier analysis. Although some authors speak of general method of solving isoprometric problems, the 18th century meaning of this expression amounts to problems in variational calculus, reserving the adjective relative for problems with isoprometric type constraints. The celebrated method of Lagrange multiplies, which applies to optimization of functions of several variable subject to constraints, did not appear until much later. C. Lagrange also applied his ideas to problems of classical mechanics, generalizing the results of Euler and Maupertuis. Euler was very impressed with Lagrange's results. It has been stated that, with characteristic courtesy, he withheld a paper he had previously written, which covered some of the same ground, in order that the young Italian might have time to complete his work and claim the undisputed invention of the new calculus. However, this chivalric view has been disputed. Helletto di The genesis of Mécanique Analytique, La Mécanique Analytique de Lagrange son heritage, Roman II. Etiacad. Die. Torino CL. Tai. This. Mart. Nata. 126 Supple. 2 277 minus 370. Lagrange published his method in two memoirs of the Turin Society in 1762 and 1773. Berlin. Already by 1756, Euler and Maupertuis, seeing Lagrange's mathematical talent, tried to persuade Lagrange to come to Berlin, but he shyly refused the offer. In 1765, Till Lambert interceded on Lagrange's behalf with Frederick of Prussia and by lesser asked him to leave Turin for a considerably more prestigious position in Berlin. He again turned down the offer, responding that It seems to me that Berlin would not be at all suitable for me while M. Euler is there. In 1766, after Euler left Berlin for St. Petersburg, Frederick himself wrote to Lagrange expressing the wish of the greatest king in Europe to have the greatest mathematician in Europe resident. At his court, Lagrange was finally persuaded. He spent the next 20 years in Prussia, where he produced a long series of papers published in the Berlin and Turin transactions, and composed his monumental work, The Mécanique Analytique. In 1767, he married his cousin Vittorio Conti. Lagrange was a favourite of the king, who frequently lectured him on the advantages of perfect regularity of life. The lesson was accepted, and Lagrange studied his mind and body as though they were machines and experimented to find the exact amount of work which he could do before exhaustion. Every night he set himself a definite task for the next day, and on completing any branch of a subject he wrote a short analysis to see what points in the demonstrations or in the subject matter were capable of improvement. He carefully planned his papers before writing them, usually without a single erasure or correction. Nonetheless, during his years in Berlin, Lagrange's health was rather poor, and that of his wife Vittoria was even worse. She died in 1783 after years of illness, and Lagrange was very depressed. In 1786, Frederick Roman II died, and the climate of Berlin became difficult for Lagrange. Aris In 1786, following Frederick's death, Lagrange received similar invitations from states including Spain and Naples, and he accepted the offer of Louis Roman XVI to move to Paris. In France, he was received with every mark of distinction and special apartments in the Louvre were prepared for his reception and he became a member of the French Academy of Sciences, which later became part of the Institut de France. At the beginning of his residence in Paris, he was seized with an attack of melancholy, and even the printed copy of his mécanique on which he had worked for a quarter of a century lay for more than two years unopened on his desk. Curiosity as to the results of the French Revolution. First stood a matter of his lethargy, a curiosity which soon turned to alarm as the revolution developed. It was about the same time, 1792, that the unaccountable sadness of his life and his timidity moved the compassion of 24-year-old René Francis Adelaide Lamonnier, daughter of his friend, the astronomer Pierre Charles Lamonnier. She insisted on marrying him, and proved a devoted wife to whom he became warmly attached. In September 1793, the reign of terror began. Under intervention of Antin Lavoisier, who himself was by then already thrown out of the academy along with many other scholars, Lagrange was specifically exempted by name in the decree of October 1793 that ordered all foreigners to leave France. On 4 May 1794, Lavoisier and 27 other tax farmers were arrested and sentenced to death and guillotined on the afternoon after the trial. Lagrange said on the death of Lavoisier, It took only a moment to cause this head to fall, and a hundred years will not suffice to produce its like. Though Lagrange had been preparing to escape from France while there was yet time, 
he was never in any danger. Different revolutionary governments gave him honors and distinctions. This luckiness or safety may to some extent be due to his life attitude he expressed many years before. I believe that, in general, one of the first principles of every wise man is to conform strictly to the laws of the country in which he is living, even when they are unreasonable. A striking testimony to the respect in which he was held was shown in 1796 when the French commissary in Italy was ordered to attend in full state on Lagrange's father and tendered the congratulations of the Republic on the achievements of his son, who had done honour to all mankind by his genius, and whom it was the special glory of Piedmont to have produced it may be added that Napoleon, when he attained power, warmly encouraged scientific studies in France and was a liberal benefactor of them. Appointed senator in 1799, he was the first signer of the Senate's consult which in 1802 annexed his father and Piedmont to France. He acquired French citizenship in consequence. The French claimed he was a French mathematician, but the Italians continued to claim him as Italian. Units of measurement Lagrange was involved in the development of the metric system of measurement in the 1790s. He was offered the presidency of the Commission for the Reform of Weights and Measures when he was preparing to escape. After Lavoisier's death in 1794, it was largely Lagrange who influenced the choice of the meter and kilogram units with decimal subdivision by the Commission of 1799. Lagrange was also one of the founding members of the Bureau des Longitudes in 1795. Nicole Normel. In 1795, Lagrange was appointed to a mathematical chair at the newly established Nicole Normel, which enjoyed only a short existence of four months. His lectures, they were elementary, they contain nothing of any mathematical importance, though they do provide a brief historical insight into his reason for proposing a decimal base 11 as the base number for the reform system of weights and measures. The lectures were published because the professors had to pledge themselves to the representatives of the people and to each other neither to read nor to repeat from memory less professors or oxicals nor males on press avec less repressant and stew pupil et. NTUL engagement in E. Point Lyre David is a main modest as Carol's secrets. The discourses were ordered taken down in short and to enable the deputies to see how the professors acquitted themselves. It was also thought that published lectures would interest a significant portion of the citizen requoit des fuels scenographiques so and disentailment destinés aux alleged to l'école normal. On dite prévoc how serrant lose pour une grande partie to la nation. Nicole Polytechnique in 1794, Lagrange was appointed professor of the École Polytechnique and his lectures there, described by mathematicians who had the good fortune to be able to attend them, were almost perfect both in form and matter. Beginning with the merest elements, he led his hearers on until, almost unknown to themselves, they were themselves extending the bounds of the subject, above all he impressed on his pupils the advantage of always using general methods expressed in a symmetrical notation. But Lagrange does not seem to have been a successful teacher. Fourier, who attended his lectures in 1795, wrote, His voice is very feeble, at least in that he does not become heated. He has a very marked Italian accent and pronounces the S like C. The students, of whom the majority are incapable of appreciating him, give him little welcome, but the professors make amends for it. Ivor Grattan Guinness. Convolutions in French Mathematics, 1800 minus 1840. Berkeley, 1990. Ball. IP 108 Late Years In 1810, Lagrange started a thorough revision of the Mécanique Analytique, but he was able to complete only about two-thirds of it before his death at Paris in 1813, in 128 Rue de Faubourg saint honoré The Paulin honoured him with the Grand Croix of the Order Imperial de la Réunion just two days before he died. He was buried that same year in the Panthéon in Paris. The inscription on his tomb reads in translation, Joseph Louis Lagrange, Senator, Count of the Empire, Grand Officer of the Legion of Honor, Grand Cross of the Imperial Order of the Reunion, Member of the Institute and the Bureau of Longitude, born in Turin on 25 January 1736, died in Paris on 10 April 1813. Work in Berlin Lagrange was extremely active scientifically during 20 years he spent in Berlin. Not only did he produce his Mécanique Analytique, but he contributed between one and two hundred papers to the Academy of Turin, the Berlin Academy, and the French Academy. Some of these are really treatises, and all without exception are of a high order of excellence. Except for a short time when he was ill, he produced on average about one paper a month. Of these, note the following as amongst the most important. First, his contributions to the fourth and fifth volumes, 
1766 minus 1773 of the Miscellanea Torinensia, of which the most important was the one in 1771, in which he discussed how numerous astronomical observations should be combined so as to give the most probable result. And later, his contributions to the first two volumes, 1784 minus 1785 of the Transactions of the Turin Academy, to the first of which he contributed a paper on the pressure exerted by fluids in motion, and to the second an article on integration by infinite series, and the kind of problems for which it is suitable. Most of the papers sent to Paris were on astronomical questions, and among these including his paper on the Jovian system in 1766, his essay on the problem of three bodies in 1772, his work on the secular equation of the moon in 1773, and his treatise on cometary perturbations in 1778. These were all written on subjects proposed by the Académie Française, and in each, haste the prize was awarded to him. Lagrangian Mechanics between 1772 and 1788, Lagrange reformulated classical slash Newtonian mechanics to simplify formulas and ease calculations. These mechanics are called Lagrangian mechanics. Algebra The greater number of his papers during this time were, however, contributed to the Prussian Academy of Sciences. Several of them deal with questions in algebra. His discussion of representations of integers by quadratic forms and by more general algebraic forms his tract on the theory of elimination, 1770. Lagrange's theorem that the order of a subgroup each of a group G must divide the order of G. His papers of 1770 and 1771 on the general process for solving an algebraic equation of any degree via the Lagrange resolvents. This method fails to give a general formula for solutions of an equation of degree 5 and higher because the auxiliary equation involved is higher degree than the original one. The significance of this method is that it exhibits the already known formulas for solving equations of second, third, and fourth degrees as manifestations of a single principle, and was foundational in Galois theory. The complete solution of a binomial equation is also treated in these papers. In 1773, Lagrange considered a functional determinant of order 3 a special case of a Jacobian. He also proved the expression for the volume of a tetrahedron with one of the vertices at the origin as the one-sixth of the absolute value of the determinant formed by the coordinates of the other three vertices. Number theory Several of his early papers also deal with questions of number theory. Lagrange was the first European to prove that Pell's equation has a non-trivial solution in the integers for any non-square natural number. Everest T1, 671 minus 732, he proved the theorem, stated by Bockett without justification, that every positive integer is the sum of four squares, 1770. He proved Wilson's theorem that is a prime if and only if is a multiple of 1771. His papers of 1773, 1775 and 1777 gave demonstrations of several results enunciated by Fermat and not previously proved. His research is the Mertique of 1775 developed a general theory of binary quadratic forms to handle the general problem of when an integer is representable by the form. He made contributions to the theory of continued fractions. Other mathematical work There are also numerous articles on various points of analytical geometry. In two of them, written rather later, in 1792 and 1793, he reduced the equations of the quadrics to their canonical forms. During the years from 1772 to 1785, he contributed a long series of papers which created the science of partial differential equations. A large part of these results was collected in the second edition of Euler's Integral Calculus, which was published in 1794. Astronomy Lastly, there are numerous papers on problems in astronomy. Are these the most important of the following? Attempting to solve the general three-body problem with the consequent discovery of the two constant pattern solutions, columnar and equilateral, 1772. Those solutions were later seen to explain what are now known as the Lagrangian points. On the attraction of ellipsoids, 1773, this is founded on Maclaurin's work. On the secular equation of the moon, 1773, also noticeable for the earliest introduction of the idea of the potential. The potential of a body at any point is the sum of the mass of every element of the body when divided by its distance from the point. Lagrange showed that if the potential of a body at an external point were known, the attraction in any direction could be at once found. The theory of the potential was elaborated in a paper sent to Berlin in 1777. 
on the motion of the nodes of a planet's orbit, 1774, on the stability of the planetary orbits, 1776. Two papers in which the method of determining the orbit of a comet from three observations is completely worked out, 1778 and 1783. This has not indeed proved practically available, but a system of calculating the perturbations by means of mechanical quadratures has formed the basis of most subsequent researches on the subject. His determination of the secular and periodic variations of the elements of the planets 1780-1784, the upper limits assigned for these agree closely with those obtained later by Laveria, and Lagrange proceeded as far as the knowledge then possessed of the masses of the planets permitted. Three papers on the method of interpolation, 1783, 1792 and 1793, the part of finite differences dealing therewith is now in the same stage as that in which Lagrange left it. Infinitesimals At a later period, Lagrange fully embraced the use of infinitesimals in preference to founding the differential calculus and the study of algebraic forms, and in the preface to the second edition of the Mécanique Analytique, which was issued in 1811, he justifies the employment of infinitesimals and concludes by saying that When we have grasped the spirit of the infinitesimal method and have verified the exactness of its results either by the geometrical method of prime and ultimate ratios or by the analytical method of derived functions, we may employ infinitely small quantities as a sure and valuable means of shortening and simplifying our Proofs Celestial Mechanics the theory of the planetary motions had formed the subject of some of the most remarkable of Lagrange's Berlin papers. In 1806 the subject was reopened by Poisson, who, in a paper read before the French Academy, showed that Lagrange's formulae led to certain limits for the stability of the orbits. Lagrange, who was present, now discussed the whole subject afresh, and in a letter communicated to the Academy in 1808 explained how, by the variation of arbitrary constants, the periodical and secular inequalities of any system of mutually interacting bodies could be determined. Prizes and distinctions. Euler proposed Lagrange for election to the Berlin Academy and he was elected on 2 September 1756. He was elected a Fellow of the Royal Society of Edinburgh in 1790, a Fellow of the Royal Society, and a foreign member of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences in 1806. In 1808, Napoleon made Lagrange a Grand Officer of the Legion of Honor on account of the Empire. He was awarded the Grand Croix of the Order Imperial de la Réunion in 1813, a week before his death in Paris, and was buried in the Pantheon, a mausoleum dedicated to the most honoured French people. Lagrange was awarded the 1764 Prize of the French Academy of Sciences for his Memo on the Libration of the Moon In 1766 the Academy proposed the problem of the motion of the satellites of Jupiter, and the prize again was awarded to Lagrange. He also shared or won the prizes of 1772, 1774 and 1778. Lagrange is one of the 72 prominent French scientists who were commemorated on plaques at the first stage of the Eiffel Tower when it first opened. Rue Lagrange in the fifth arrondissement in Paris is named after him. In Turin, the street where the house of his birth still stands is named via Lagrange. The lunar crater Lagrange and the asteroid 1006 Lagrange also bear his name.